So, Children's Church in the back. For any of the little ones like to go back and go there now? Brandon is waiting. You can bring it on up here. We got the basket out. <laughs> there you go, little fella. <laughs> All right. Jim, you ready? I need that. Probably not. <laughs> Would you bow with me as we pray for the speaker? Lord, all praise and glory to you. We thank you this morning for Gary, for Rhonda, for their family, for being a part of this congregation. Father, we, we ask that you give him long life and service to your kingdom. And this morning, as he delivers your message to us, help us to be mindful and attentive and to remember the things that we're told today that we can use in our lives to influence those around us. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Good morning, everyone. We are certainly happy to see you with us today. A lot of guests with us. Uh, I guess down for, for Thanksgiving. No better place than the beach. Uh, coming down on a beautiful day with the liquid sunshine. <laughs> but... Um, you know, you know, you wake up on a Sunday morning, the rain's coming down, it's kind of dark. I thought about just staying home today, because it sure is easy to sleep in the rain, isn't it? But we're grateful that you are here, uh, that you decided to come on and be with us anyway. It is a good day gathering with brothers and sisters in Christ and uh, and in worshiping God, God together. So we just had Thanksgiving on Thursday, and uh, many of us, if not all of us, were with with some family, maybe immediate family, extended family, or friends, or whatever it might be. Probably ate too much, but enjoyed the fellowship and the food and all that goes along with it, even the stressors that come with Thanksgiving. And we love our families. We love being with them. But sometimes, and you know this, life can be stressful around families. Am I right? You know I'm right because sometimes we have family members that we only drag out a year, once or twice a year for, for special occasions. And we never know what they're going to do or say. Oh, and let's get alcohol involved, okay? And really, it's a flip of the coin. Yes, I know. I've seen it. I've counseled with people many times dealing with families and occasions and things coming up and all like this. And whereas Thanksgiving should be a time of thanksgiving, maybe even rest, it can be a stressful, stressful time uh, in, in our lives. You know... What kinds of words come to mind to you when you think of stress? And oftentimes it's words like anxiety or worry, fear, doubt, tension, or chaos come to mind. You might be saying, you know what, Gary, this is interesting. You know, right after Thanksgiving, leading up to Thanksgiving, we had a couple of lessons on Thanksgiving. Now we had Thanksgiving, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And you might be saying, huh, you have a lesson on stress? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because we look forward to all the festivities of Thanksgiving. And then we have Christmas coming up. And you know this in-between time, it can be stressful. It can be stressful. Because, once again, family, and we're going to discuss, discuss that a little bit more here in a minute. But we not only have the family issues, we have... Uh, for many folks, they have money issues during this time of year because of all the commitments and they got to get, get gifts for, for children and grandchildren and all. But let me tell you something on that. With, with Christmas, I'll go ahead and give you the heads up. This, this is wisdom from Gary, okay? So maybe there's not a lot we can do about the money issue right now. Next year, 2024, Christmas will be the 25th of December. Y'all are like, seriously? Yeah. So you can start saving up now. 
to do away with that money issue. Y'all are looking at me like, this guy is absolutely ingenious. I'm just helping you out, okay? I am helping all of you out to get rid of one of the stressors in your life, and that's the money issue, because Christmas will be the 25th of December every year, and we can go and prepare. I'm not crazy. (laughs) But a lot of chaos does occur around this time of year with so many things happening, people to see, shopping to do. In his book, Adrenaline and Stress, by Dr. Archibald Hart, he suggests that stress is a result of anything that annoys, threatens, excites, scares, worries, hurries, angers, frustrates, challenges, or reduces self-esteem. It's a result of those things. That's where our stress comes from. So it can be some bad things. It can be some good things. Now, not all stress is bad. I want to go ahead and tell you that up front. Not all stress is bad. Putting some stress on us helps us to perform better oftentimes. Having some stress um, it makes us to, 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 do, to do better things or, or maybe to perform at a higher level. So maybe there is some good stress there that, it, that it's okay to have. But today, I'm not going to be talking as much about the good stress as I am the one, the stress that, 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 that tends to interfere in our lives and to bring us down. So we think about some things that cause us stress. And I read that there's four major things that cause stress. People, <laughs> number one. Events, thoughts, and emotions. So, with people, family, all that goes along with the stress that can come from family. Now, we love our families, but they can be stressful at times. And and marriage, marriage is great. Has your marriage ever been stressful? Probably so, I, I would say. There, there are stressors that come with family, with, 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 with children, uh, learning. When you first get married, you know, you're learning to live together and share space. You're learning to, to compromise and to solve conflicts. The things that go on with just adjusting to each other's little, little quirks or idiosyncrasies. You know, you wonder about that person that you're married to now. Are they always going to do this? Maybe I can train them up. I will change them. Yeah, add that stressor to yourself. Yeah. Raising children. Dealing with the high demands and stress of getting children to school or babysitter on time. Dealing with stress of all different roles that parents have to fill. Like the nurse, the teacher, the referee, problem solver, whatever it might be. And then you get outside of your immediate family, your marriage, you got maybe your in-laws or your parents or siblings. Family can be stressful. We would all agree and say amen, right? Y'all know it. Family can be stressful. That doesn't mean you don't love them and care for them and will do anything for them. But family, family can be stressful. And then we have, you know, work. Work, yeah, that can be stressful at times. Um, the stress of work, you know, your workload increasing, you're dealing with boss or, or co-workers or some, some odd people that you work with, the, the demands of productivity, the boss breathing down your neck. Um, you're dealing with, like I said, those co-workers that, that can be so arrogant or, or, or antagonistic and all of the things that go along with work, it can be very difficult. Trying to get things done, making sure it works out correctly. Stress is said to be responsible for more than half of the 550 million workdays lost annually because of absenteeism. Hmm. Now, what if your work involves, say, driving? Well, that's another stressor there. Trying to drive through places, maybe driving an 18-wheeler through, through major cities or whatever it is, and, you, and you're running behind. 
Y'all kind of get the picture here of how we can just add all these stressors onto us, no matter what it is. And, and with our work and, and trying to do well, yeah. So I, I can also say, having been in the military, the, the work can not only be stressful, but the family can be stressful, all tied there into one as you're deployed and going into places that, that you wouldn't care to be in. But sometimes, sometimes those stressors can lead to divorce, a high divorce rate in the military because of work and because of, of, the, of the family issues that come up from that. Then we also have those thoughts, those emotions, things that we can't change. Sometimes the stress I'm under has less to do with outside circumstances and sometimes more to do with the stress that's going on, with the, with the problems that I have going on inside of me, with the, with the battles that I'm fighting every day. And, and those are very personal. And all of us have our own battles, maybe things in our past, things that we've done, things we said, things that we wish that we could do over. The psalmist knew about that in the 139th Psalm. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Much of the time, our, our, our thoughts, our anxious thoughts have something to do with something we can't change. Are, are the anxious thoughts something to do with your past that you can, you can, you can no longer do anything about, but you're still going to be thinking about it and it's going to weigh heavy on your mind and it's going to put undue stress on you? Are your anxious thoughts about something in your future that you really can't do anything about either, but maybe but wait? We get anxious and anticipate something negative about a future event, and you know, nine times out of ten, that never actually happens. I have dealt with people before in counseling situations where they're so anxious about something coming up and they get into this catastrophic thinking and, and all of their thoughts lead right to the absolute worst thing that could happen in a situation. The catastrophic thinking. You know, we can let, waste a lot of time stressing about things that we can't change. We can't, we can't, change what others will think or what they say or do. We can be stressed over what others are maybe doing or not doing. We can't control other people. When I'm dealing with stressed out, anxious people, I have oftentimes gotten a whiteboard out and, and wrote on the whiteboard all of their issues. And then we look at them one by one and we look at those things, things that I have control over and things that I do not have control over. And oftentimes, oftentimes, most of the items we have listed are things we have no control over. And we start to rationalize and look at them and say, what is it I can do? I have no control over this. So why has this taken up so much time in my, in my mind thinking about something I cannot control? I can't control it. I can't do anything about it. What is it I can control? What is it I can do something about? I imagine we're all familiar then with the effects of stress, the physical effects. I'll review these for you if you didn't know, but I bet you do. High blood pressure, hypertension, stress. Heart attacks, strokes, ulcers, stress, heart disease, cancer, lung ailments, accidents. Yeah, accidents can come from stress as well. Suicide, stress-related. Prevention Magazine says almost 9 out of 10 adults have experienced serious stress. More than 4 out of 10 adults suffer adverse health effects from stress. And some estimates suggest that 75 to 90% of all physician office visits are for some stress-related complaints. Yes, stress definitely can affect us physically. You know, it can affect us spiritually as well. Stress will stagnate us, stifle us, slow us down in our, in our spiritual lives. 
People oftentimes are so excited when they become baptized, become a Christian. And, 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 and then sometimes they get hit with the resistance of what the world has for them. In other words, somebody becomes a Christian. And oftentimes they're making life changes. Sometimes those life changes mean I can't hang out with these people here because I'm now a Christian and that is not a good influence for me. Sometimes those people could be family, sometimes friends, close associates, people you've known since grade school, whatever it is, but your newfound faith, your, your trust in God tells you I can no longer be with these people. My life has changed and that causes stress. Our spiritual growth is, 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 is greatly hindered, can be greatly hindered by our worries and our pursuit of other things. It's what anxiety does to us. What are we pursuing? Are we, are, are we really pursuing Christ? Do we want to know more about our Lord? Do we want to trust in Him and live our lives the way that we should? Stress can stagnate our spiritual growth. All right, preacher. Well, this is a great sermon, and you have totally depressed me. Thank you. Now I'm more stressed than ever that you brought all this up. And I got to get out of here because I got I to go and look at the Sears catalog. There's no longer a Sears, is there? J.C. Penney. Is there no J.C. Penney? Okay. Amazon. I got to go on Amazon. I got to do Christmas shopping. I got people coming. I got things to do, places to go. Come on, preacher. I'm depressed. Okay. So what do we do about stress? Listen to this. This is This is pretty good. What do we do about stress? Well, church, we go to the Lord. Yeah, I say, preacher, that's profound. Never thought about going to the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, we had our scripture reading this morning, David did for us. Let me read that for you again. Okay. Now, most of us have been Christians for lots of years. I can look around and tell. Maybe some of you haven't. But for most of us, we have. This is a verse that we probably know by heart. This is the NIV. I know it by heart from the King James because that's what I was raised on. Do not be anxious about anything. Huh. Now, even though you know the verse, are you living it? Do you believe this verse? This is the inspired word of God. It's coming from Paul there in Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we go to God as a last resort. That should never be our last resort. That's first. Do not be anxious about anything. We can be anxious about making ends meet or about job interviews or, you know, we, 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 we bite our nails in anticipation. And instead of doing all of those things and maybe things that aren't very good, we should go to God and we should leave it there, release it to Him, leave it in His hands. Hmm. How about here in 1 Peter chapter 5, 6, and 7? Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Cast it on Him. Church, you know these verses. Do you believe them? Do, do you believe them? You know, our pride can keep us from going to God. And, and, and that pride can stress, our, stress us out. How many times we get stressed trying a hundred different ways to solve a problem before we decide to go to God and talk to Him about it and pray about it and leave it with Him? I'm preaching to you. 
preaching to me. <laughs> These are good Bible verses, good ones to know, good ones to go by. But yes, I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes knowing them and doing them is two different things and leaving it with God. Next, what can we do about our stress? Well, we can surrender it to the Lord. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come under God's control. The yoke thing. Being yoked with Christ. Being yoked with Christ. You know, we will not have peace, the peace that Christ brings us until we release ourselves to His Lordship. We might think that allowing Christ to control our life would add to our stress, but, you know, sometimes we, 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 we forget that Christ is the great stress reliever, not added stress. You know, it seems strange to think that I can't be free until I surrender, but it's true. Surrendering to the Lordship of Christ. Freedom, freedom from stress comes with allowing Jesus to lead us. He says, my yoke is easy. <clears throat> you might say, well, preacher, that's not right. You know, it, it's not easy to, to be a Christian oftentimes. You know, we're called to stand out. We're called to, to, to resist temptation. We're called to live contrary to the world. We're called to come out of our comfort zones. His yoke is easy. Jesus is saying, come and be yoked to me. I want to take your burden. I want to take it off of you. I want to be there for you. I want to give you my power. I want to give you my strength to accomplish whatever it is that you need to do. Take the stress off of you. Let's bear it. We can bear it together under this yoke because I will carry it. Once again, do we believe that his yoke is easy and his burden is light? Do we truly believe that? Church, we need to focus on the Lord to relieve our stress. Luke 10, 38-42, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, they came to a village, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care my, that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. <laughs> Martha, Martha. I can hear Jesus saying that now, Martha, Martha. Kind of like sighing when he's saying it. Martha, 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 Martha. The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. I love that narrative. You know, Satan wants to keep us too busy to focus on Christ. He wants to make us worried and upset about many things. Jesus would be willing to tell us, you know, you need to slow down. You need to focus in on me. We need to remember what the priority is. Being busy, being busy is good, but the tendency to get too busy and we neglect the most important thing. We don't put the most important things first. Is, is Christ first in your life? Or is he compartmentalized way over somewhere else? Is, is Christ what you wake up to and think about in the morning? Or is it the stressors of the world and things that you got to get done in your checklist? Is Jesus really your focal point? Is Jesus just something that we talk about on Sundays? Church, if we are to focus on the Lord, I think it would allow us to slow down, to calm down, 
and to get our heads in the right frame of mind. Then through focusing on Christ and going forward in His strength, we'll be able to see things in the right perspective and make decisions according to God's leading. Focusing on Christ to take away our stress. And lastly, to rely on the Lord. Actually rely on the Lord. Sometimes God allows us to be in stressful situations where we're under great pressure. Far beyond our ability to endure. I think it's done sometimes just so we can see and come to realize that, that we can rely on God. We can rely on God to get us through stressful situations. And have you ever gone through something and you say, Lord, please help me with this. I'm stressed out. All of this is going on in my life. Lord, I don't know where to turn or what to do. And, and, and then by some reason, whatever, all of this clears up and things come into view and the stressors go away. And then you thought, well, I guess it would have happened anyway. Really? You prayed about it. You took it to God. Good things happened. And now you're saying, well, maybe it's coincidence. Hmm. You thought, have you ever thought maybe the Holy Spirit is working in your life? That, that, that God is taking away these stressors through the Holy Spirit, working in your life. God cleared all of this up. Church, that's not coincidence. When are we going to stop believing in coincidences and start believing in providences? Start believing that the Holy Spirit is actually working in our lives like the Bible teaches us. Hmm. God wants to work in our lives, and I truly believe He's only going to do it if we allow it. Our last verse for us this morning, John chapter 16, verse 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble. <laughs> it's not all rainbows and unicorns. You're going to have some trouble. The Bible teaches us that. We're going to have trouble. How we deal with it is up to you. You will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. When the stress is getting the better of you, and it seems like the world is winning, we need to remember what Jesus said and rely on Him to overcome. If we respond to it correctly, stress can be a great teacher and a great motivator. Not all stress is bad. But church, when stress is getting to us to the point that we're not focusing in on Christ, when we've taken our focus off of Him, when we start looking at other things in this world, when we start comparing ourselves to others, whatever it might be, when the stress is so bad, look, you need to turn your hearts and your lives and your eyes back to Christ. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So I, in I encourage you and I challenge you as, yes, we are, for most people, going through a stressful time of the year. All the holidays, all the different goings on, all the things that you want to do and uh, places you want to go and people you want to see and family and friends, all of these great, wonderful things can be stressful. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. And oh, by the way, it's okay to say no to things sometimes. It's okay to say no. This morning, we're going we're gonna to end with that. And, you know, it's, it's great being a Christian. It is absolutely amazing to be a Christian, to, to be a Christ follower. But it's only amazing, it's only great when I actually do those things that I should be doing. When I actually remember verses about not being anxious about anything. I don't have any tattoos, but I need to get that tattooed right here on my arm. So I can look at it all the time. Do not be anxious about anything. 
Because I get anxious. Don't be anxious. Give it to the Lord. Let God truly control your life. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Allow that to happen. Church, I hope you have a stress-free, or as stress-free as it can be, holiday season, Christmas season, all the things that are going on. We're going to have an invitation song if you want to become a Christian. If you haven't, you are welcome to do that today. If you need to come back to the Lord, you can do that. To our guests, thank you for being here. Uh, we're always your church while you're here with us. You, you have our bulletin. Call us if you need anything. My number's in there. Call me. Call me if you need to talk. If you need something, it's okay. Call or text. This morning, if you have need of the Lord's invitation, oh, and once again, if you don't want to come down this aisle, that's okay. Get with me afterwards. We can pray together or help you have a, however we can, whatever your needs might be. This morning, though, if you have that need, you want to respond, you're welcome to do so right now. While